Iron Within, brothers! Yes, and in today's episode, I will be taking this old, abandoned toy tank, and I'll be turning it into something fantastic. Or at least, that's the plan. So, let's jump straight into this. What, what are we looking at? What are we talking about? Well, this toy tank is something I've had at the bottom of my projects bag for quite a while now, along with all the other broken and discarded toys. And it's about the same size as a Rhino. I mean, it's a little bit longer, it's a little tad wider than it should be, but to be honest, the proportions aren't so bad that you go, oh, well, it's you know can't be done it's clearly like bane blade sized or something like that um and this being my first real attempt to try and make something that's close to kind of imperial design you know going for death guard rather than iron warriors the idea being that if it looks a bit weird and it looks a bit archaic and alien that's okay that's okay you know i'm not trying to perfectly recreate a rhino out of plastic i'm just trying to make something a little bit close now, this being a Predator build, it's going to be a full fat Predator. It's going to have the turret, it's going to have the side sponsons with the LAS cannons, you know, the full shebang. So let's just jump straight into this. So being a trash build, um, I'm using lots of materials that ordinarily would be thrown away. So for example, I've got a big bead, I've got a Nescafe coffee pod, I've got one of those cat jingly toys, you know, the little plastic cages, the little bell inside. It's like a ball that they pat around. I've got a broken half of one of those. I've got all sorts of rubbish. Now, the main cannon on this thing I'm going to use this water gun nozzle for, literally found in the street outside on the floor. And the main body of the turret, I quite like the idea of using this coffee pot because it it feels just the right size. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it's got a weirdly sort of classic kind of vibe to it. There was something about putting these two elements together. I could see they could work. To better help a custom vehicle fit into the 40k universe, use 40k parts. In this case, I happen to have an old Rhino hatch, so put that on there. For the front, I like the idea of using this Vindicator ram. Now, it will need modification because the front of this toy tank is completely plain. Um, so, same as the sides, I mean, these side panels don't even begin to resemble Rhino sides that Predator is based on. And while I've got the insides, I don't have the outsides. Something maybe doors on to one side and then the sponsons further back. And I'm trying to go for that kind of because it's such a weird build. I'm trying to go for that classic sort of rogue trader, custom scratch built sort of predator look. So the this bead I'm going to saw in half and use for the sponsons, as I've said. Which when you look at classic predator images online, that's what they look like. You know, the gun shields are these big curved surfaces. So this project's going to be split into sort of roughly three or four steps. The first bit, of course, being any cutting and sticking that needs to be done. So in this case, removing these little plastic details that I just didn't like on the body of this tank. The gas cans are just enormous and the wrong sort of proportion, as well as that shovel, which, yeah, arguably you could use, but no, nah, I wanted it off. But there are some nice little features here that I could still use, like the vents at the back and a big big challenge early on is the underside of this toy which just is too low to the ground i know that the underside is covered in all these weird holes and details and it's because it's one of those pull back uh, wind up toys so those holes either side just behind the uh, screw holes that's where wheels should be like car wheels so it's it really is a, a cheap toy like completely gutted shell but from this maybe we can create something pretty cool. I will apologize if you can hear any explosions going on in the background. There are actual fireworks going off. Um, but here you can see I'm just tearing off the underside and removing the pegs and you can just like snap it off or you can use like a pair of clippers to clip off those screw pegs. Um, 
very very easy at this stage it's all very free form and it's 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 the kind of the stage in the project that i think a lot of people really early on just burn out with because it's a lot of manual labor and smooth surfaces and it's not particularly fun and sexy like gluing guns on there or anything it's figuring out the base shapes like with this turret i'd love to use this coffee pod but it's going to need some work so using a pair of clippers i'm just going to remove this outer rim that would hold it in the coffee machine and it's a very easy process so the nice thing about a project like this um, where i'm making something that's sort of nurgle inspired rather than strictly imperial strictly iron warriors and, and you know kind of heavily manufactured is you can make lots of mistakes and it's okay like if there was a scale and on one end you had the ramshackle nature of the orcs where it really doesn't matter just glue things on and make it look cool and then on the other end of the scale you've got something that you're trying to make for say the imperial guard or the space marines where all the rivets kind of need to be in the right place and things need to be you know relatively smooth and, and measured and correct i'd say making a sort of demon engine quite sort of archaic tank is somewhere in the middle where it looks the business but it's okay if things don't line up perfectly You're, you can get away with it so here you can see i'm just preparing the cap to be the turret um, i'm going to need to do something about this ridge pattern that goes around the sides it's nice but it's going to have to go because it doesn't fit bit of modification needed on the old uh, water gun barrel and it's it's quite nice when you find little shapes like this um, with that kind of bulbous body that's going to be the main sort of connector to the turret for the cannon uh, it's got a bit of a like a stug feel to it like a big kind of heavy artillery cannon almost rather than so that i've tried this now where i'll talk to people you know and i'll show them what i've made and say well what if, if i don't tell you what this vehicle is meant to be what does it say and so far it's been pretty successful most people say predator but there'll always be one or two people that go is it a vindicator is this a plague burst crawler what what is this so predator cannons tend to look one way but right, we'll worry about that later okay so looking at the vindicator ram that's going to go on the front of this as you can see there are two holes that pose a problem for me in this you've got the main cannon hole well my cannon's going to be on top of the hull, so I'm going to need to fill that. And then you've got this hole for the viewport, for the driver to see through, or whatever. The front of this tank doesn't have a, a viewport for the driver, so I just need to fill these gaps. Now, this is a part where we're making irreversible changes. Like the toy tank, you can kind of get away with if you get bored or mess up. You can go, ah, whatever, it's just a toy. I don't care. But with this... We're, we're officially changing an actual, you know, piece of kit. We're, we're completely turning it into... So, well, I mean, we're not completely changing it, but we're making changes that means it will no longer be used on a Vindicator model. So I cut a piece of plastic card to fill the main gun hole, as well as a small rectangular section, as well as the section to fill the view hole. Now, you might be wondering, James... Okay, you're doing all these, this cutting and sticking now, but what about surfacing? Because if you were to paint this up as it is, you're going to be able to see that you've just stuck a couple of bits of plastic to a Vindicator ram, and it's not going to look very good. Well, later on we'll be using some filler and we'll be sanding this down, but I don't want to try and do this project individual pieces where, okay, we're going to get the ram finished and then we're going to get the turret finished, and then we're going to get the body finished, all stages individually. So no, no, no. Everything will get finished at the same time. So it kind of goes against the idea of, like, say, assembling and sub-assemblies. We're not doing that here. We are going to get this, but like, all the cutting and sticking done, all the filling of holes done, all the painting done, one big wave after another. Fantastic. So here you can see that those bits are now glued in place and, you know, this doesn't need to be precise. The filler is going to do a lot of the hard work for us. There are some curves that will pre present themselves as challenges, but we'll worry about that later. Here we are gluing the little cap on the end of the coffee pod.
and also dropping it on myself. <laughs> Ah, you gotta love projects that fight back. I will actually get over the course of this video, spoiler alert, I will get two injuries over the course of making this video. I will cut myself twice while making this, so later on you will see me with plasters on my left hand. And here I am just making the plastic disc to go on the bottom of the pod. And you might be thinking, oh, you're going to cut that and glue it straight on. No, we're going to fill the inside with some hot glue first. Now, I'm not going crazy. I'm not trying to fill the entire thing solid with hot glue. I just want to add some support because the coffee pods are really weak, um, as you'd expect from something that's designed to be used and thrown away or recycled. But here I'm using the hot glue gun as well on the inside of the tank. So it's the same premise. Put some plastic card in there to fill the holes. The hot glue is there to reinforce it. Here on the toy gun nozzle, it's the exact same thing because as you can see, after being dropped and broken and abandoned on the street, it too is in need of a bit of a a bit of a fix, a bit of a tune-up. With that hot glue now dry, I'm going to use this bit of plastic card that I cut and measured off screen to make the base for the tank. As you can see, it, it is easy enough to get it in, um, to put that in place. But you do have to be careful when trying to super glue something that is like precisely measured, because chances are you'll put it a little bit too far to the left, and then the right-hand side of it will just flop in, and big, big mess. But um, one trick that I will be doing in this video is everyone's favourite, bicarbonate of soda. So this is going to create an effect similar to like a welding bead where effectively this will cause the super glue to just set instantly once it's sprinkled on. I know that there are like special sprays you can get to make super glue just bond immediately, but this being the underside of the vehicle, I, I don't particularly care. I just need this to be solid, so stick that on, get it, get it in place. I'm doing it in sections rather than trying to do one long strip of super glue because I, I I just want it to set firm. You know, I, I I don't at the end of the day with this model, I want it to be able to survive being dropped off a table by accident. Uh not that you should ever drop your t models off the table by, you know, like deliberately to test them. Um but certainly, you know, just for strength. Okay, so there you go. You can see I've done that around the entire base of the tank. And we're getting dangerously ready to move on to the next stage. And it is, it is a solid technique. I do like it. I do like using the bicarbonate and super glue trick. So here we have the cap of the turret now, and that's looking really good. I added more hot glue to support it. So it's just a little bit firmer. It's still a bit flimsy, but the base will help that. So we'll be super gluing that in place. And once that's done, we will attach the tank cannon to it. And now we can finally move on to the second phase. So all the cutting and sticking is done. It's time to smooth over those surfaces. So I'm going to be using this grab adhesive that you can get from Asda or Walmart, as well as the, the quintessential lollipop stick and coffee stirrer. One for large surfaces, one for small surfaces. And it's the simplest trick in the book. You just splodge some of that white goodness on there. And then using a stick, you are getting not total coverage of the surface. You're just trying to make sure that it's gone in the cracks and the crevices. And then using the stick, you wipe off the excess. Because what we're trying to aim for is a continuous flat surface with no hint that this used to be a big hole for a Vindicator cannon or a viewport. Now the back being curved will actually be easier to sand than the front because the front curves inwards so it's a right pain to try and get a file in there but we'll worry about that later. For now let's do the same to the tank base and that goes on nice and easily there. As you can see using half a lollipop stick because why not? You may as well you know if you've if you've got it, you no need to throw the whole thing away. Just snap it in half and use the other end. As well as around the tank cannon and turret. 
Now at this stage, you know, I'm I'm trying to be relatively neat, but the the aim is to fill the holes rather than to get it perfectly applied and look beautiful. The sanding and the filing will do that. I'm also going to go around the outer rim of the sort of the hatch on top of the tank on top of the turret just so that it doesn't look like a big higgledy piggledy mess of plastic and hot glue and super glue so there you go here it is dry and you can see a lot of this needs to be sanded and here it is on the tank and there are what we call peaks and valleys here so you've got areas where the surface just isn't like smooth and level which we will be sorting out in a moment. Now here you can see what it's looking like roughly if I just sort of push one on top of the other. It's important to get a feel for how this, this project's going to turn out because you can't just throw a load of stuff together and hope for the best. You, got, you have to stop and check and, and look and, and figure it out. But just while the, just while the, the filler dries, I took some time to make one of the one of the weapon options for the Predator. Um, I like the idea of having a combi flamer on there, but this being a Nurgle build, why not use one of the Plague Spewer heads from the uh, First Strike No No Fear box? So here you can see I've sanded down the filler on the RAM, and you might be able to see, but it'll be a bit clearer in a moment, but you might be able to see the peaks and valleys that I was talking about. The back side of the ram has worked really well. Um, you can see the transition nicely. And this is all just done with sandpaper and a file. This isn't done with like super magical tools or anything. This is just a quick going over just to get the excess off. But on the body, Hopefully you'll be able to see from the shadows and the, the contrast. There are these big sort of divots in the body and just more, more filler will be needed over the top of that. And we will also still need to sort out the sides. So I've sprayed everything in black just, just so I can see more visually the areas that need more attention. So if I was to leave this as is and paint it, you would be able to tell immediately looking at this, oh, that's been filled. That's been, you know, had some filler put on it and it needs sorting out. So what we're going to do using some sanding paper, we're going to go over it again. Now, look at the body of the tank here. All the black areas, if I just hold this up to the camera, all the black areas where the spray paint hasn't been touched by the sandpaper, those are the valleys. That's the area that needs to be filled to get rid of the weird lumpy bumpy shape that we've got. All the areas that are white are where the sandpaper has smoothed it out. And you can actually see from the ram, it's smoothed it out so much that it's starting to actually meet the bare grey plastic of the Games Workshop bit, which is good. Now you do have to take a bit of care when sanding because you might put too much pressure on it and need to put some super glue and fix bits but don't worry I'll carry on doing that off camera now let's talk about the sides of this predator oh yes so using my incredible design talent I've managed to whip up these armored plates to go on the the sides um, these designs now if you look at the sides of a rhino or a vindicator or whatever you've got based on that Rhino chassis, you will notice that it is not just one big flat surface, it is made up of many layers. So what we're going to do to recreate that effect is use Plasticard, and we're going to use layers of Plasticard. So here's one that I've cut out after making some modifications to the template. And as you can see, that looks pretty all right. Um, I will still need to do some surface work on the actual tank body itself, but the actual, you know, look, the actual coverage is good. Now, I still plan on using these Rhino hatch doors on the sides just to help tie it into the 40k universe a bit more, so we need to account for that in the design. So in this case, I've cut them out and I've drawn around them on the template. And there you go, you see. You see there, it actually fits quite nicely. Now, the only pain in the ass about this technique is 
for every single layer of plastic art that goes on there, I'm going to need to cut out that exact same rectangular hole in order for it to fit. But because these are made up of multiple, multiple layers, that's okay. It will look good in the end. Now, don't be afraid of making modifications to your design as you go along. <coughs> it's something that we all need to do at some point. I will also need to cut smooth the side panels on the tank here, as you can see I've done on one side. Again, soft plastic, so just a craft knife will do that nicely. But by my goodness, you need to make sure that the surface is flat and smooth and ready before you try to glue anything on there. Like this is by far the most time consuming part of the project. The sanding, the filling, all that. Yeah, that was okay. But this, this is where it really comes down to like just repeated cutting and cutting. As I said, orc vehicles, doesn't matter. Just throw a load of shapes on there, it looks good. Imperium vehicles, it's this, but 10 times worse. Death Guard, Demon Engines, you've got a lot more creative freedom. Like these these angles are not perfect. They are not perfectly matched on either side, but that's okay. That is A-OK -okay when it's like a weird archaic vehicle found by the Death Guard, you know, used for the last 10,000 years. Like that's that's fine. That is okay. But as you can see, even with the modifications, it matches the design pretty well. So off screen, I've glued all those together now. The four layers of plastic card and the hatches, they're all together in, into two separate side panels. And now we're going to start applying this to the tank. Now, even though I've flattened out the surface, I'm not going to try and glue it down all at once. We're going to do one corner, get one, one corner of it down, and then see how it looks because this only has to be like a couple of mil too far down or too far up and the entire look is thrown off. We want this to match the body as much as we can. And to make matters worse, we need to make sure that this is parallel. You know, both sides are the same height, same, you know, same distance X, Y and Z axis. You know, this needs to be mirrored on either side so it can be a bit of a pain but that's why you only glue down a little bit so you can still wiggle it and adjust it now once that's glued down you can see i'm going to use some bicarbonate of soda this is just to make sure that this side the bond on this side is strong because i don't want the risk of this breaking off as i'm working on the front Bicarbonate of soda is a wonderful trick with super glue. Absolutely wonderful. It can be a massive pain in the ass, but it's absolutely wonderful at the same time. Here I am putting super glue down for the front now. And all the while, we're holding a bit, gluing a bit, doing the bicarbonate of soda trick, because we want this to be on there forever, and we want there to be no gaps, no lift up, nothing. This is going to be attached to the side of this tank forever. Or at least that's the plan. So it's just a matter of taking your time. This is this is the project all coming together now. Like I know for a lot of people, the best part of a project, myself included, is when you're sticking on the fiddly little details and deciding where the skulls will go. But you have to do all of these states, all these steps, in order to get to that good bit. So if I. So I'm filling up the sides of the armor panels just where it's easiest with some of the filler. This is so that from different angles you can't just immediately tell that it's multiple layers of plastic card glued together. It actually looks like armor panels. It actually looks like it's been manufactured. And oh, Man, we're really coming to the end of this video now. Okay, so... Let's have a look with all the pieces in place just to get a feel of how that looks. And yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. I'd say this is this is pretty accurate to the vision. But what's missing right now are the sponsoons. Now, while I was making this, I talked to people in the uh the what's it called? The Warhammer Kitbash community or Kitbash Crazy Facebook group. Because I wanted their opinion on these cages on either side made from the cat toy because i like them but i don't really know that much about say the death guard so i don't really know what looks right and what doesn't on say something that's sort of vaguely post horus heresy era 
at this point I did indeed cut my finger so that's where the plaster is. Now I knew this was going to be las cannons on either side in the sponsons. I don't actually have two matching las cannons so I've got one from a sentinel kit, imperial guard sentinel kit and one old las cannon from a land raider kit. But if you cut away all the surrounding gribbliness and just keep the las cannon barrels they're basically the same. I mean one's got a hole and one doesn't but here we are looking at the engineering genius for my turret which is using this bit from a soap dispenser or like a carex dispenser in order to create the little connection between the turret and the tank. I'm sure there's 101 accurate ways to do this but the scope of my engineering genius knows no bounds and this just works like every time so there you go the first tank i ever tried to make a moving turret on i just used a wooden dowel and stuck that in the hole because it fit <laughs> but there you go so we're lining this up we're trying to get it accurate as much as we can it's a bit of a swine i'm not gonna lie because if it's just too far to the left or the right then it's gonna throw off the look of the turret but once it's on there it looks good. Now, right now it's a bit loose because that tube wasn't designed for that hole. But let's make it fit. Now, the easiest way I found, and this is incredibly ghetto, is just to use some masking tape. You stick some masking tape on the base of a turret and it will fill any hole because you can just keep adding very thin layers to it. And it doesn't take like two seconds to do. But before you know it, you've got enough masking tape on there that it will just fit in that hole and sit there very nicely. I think this only took like three pieces of masking tape. And now that is happy as Larry. Look at that. That is not moving anywhere, which is really good. So, yeah, I hope, I hope that's a little something you guys can take away if you ever find yourself trying to do a turret. Just make it easy. I know it's not the most longest lasting thing. I know there's better ways to do it. But if you're in a pickle, if it's something you're making out of scratch, just don't worry about it. Just get the thing done. <laughs> just have fun with it and get it done. Like, that's what matters. So the final additions, as you can see, I've had that second cut now on my thumb this time. I'm going to add this Horus Heresy era rocket launcher or missile launcher um, from some Havocs that I got on eBay a while back. And I thought this would be a good replacement for the Havoc launcher that go typically is found on Chaos vehicles, mainly because I don't have one of the stock Havoc launchers. So there you go. Havoc launchers fire rockets. That's a rocket launcher. In my mind, that makes sense. And then we're just down to the final edition stage. So with that, let's wrap this up. But before we wrap this up, let's just talk a little bit about my texturing. I tend to put lots of weird textures all over my models just to get them all gribbly and gross and disgusting if they're nurgly death guardy. Um, massive fan of crackle paints. I think um, Martian Iron Earth and a ghrelin, a ghrelin texture, whatever, fantastic from games workshop so let's just remember where we started this project and see how far we've come i mean as you can see i've put some sand on there i've covered it in extra little bits and pieces done some green stuff work with disgusting little insect holes man i had a blast putting the final details on this but i didn't want to record i mean man this video is long enough as it is. Thank you for watching as far as you have. Like I'm not covering <clears throat> the paint job. As you can see, here it is all painted up and it looks fab. Um, this has been an absolute monster of a project. And there reaches a point where you just can't stop yourself. And before you know it, you finish the bloody thing. So I thought, let's just get this done. Let's get this video put together. And let me show you guys the newest addition to my force. But yeah, in the end, I had a absolute blast working on this project. Like, I, I've i found a technique now for painting Death Guard vehicles that I'm in love with. And I will have to do a video on that at some point. I think the addition of 40k parts can turn anything into a 40k vehicle. Like, I'm going to try at some point one of, the, one of those deodorant bottle land speeders. Because, man, those are classic. 
the side sponsons really grew on me. I absolutely love the ball shape as well as the cage. The cage painted green so it fits into the armor panels. Man, that works way better than I thought it would. And I'm really happy with how that looks. And what can I say? I think regardless of what you're working on, you'll have fun. There comes a point where once you get past the tedious stuff, you'll start having a great time. Like I had, I had great fun with the little disgusting insect holes and making little green stuff bugs coming out of those. Oh, bleh, bleh, really gross. And I finally finished painting up my Plague Marines that I've had for months now. They're all based up and done. And here we are, boys and girls. What can I say? My force, my Iron War is at this point, so I've got my... Venom Crawler and my Predator Tank, as you know, they're both finished. I've got a full squad of seven Plague Marines now, all finished and based. Um, the Plague Marine Unit Champion there, I'm straight up just going to use as like an Exalted Champion, because or Exalted, uh, the one that goes around fighting heroes, just because he looks a bit too grandiose just to be a Unit Champion. I'll have to make someone that's a bit simpler as it were <laughs> he's a bit big he's a big boy um yeah like two full squads now of iron warriors um man it's all it's all slowly coming together this army's come a long way and i've got to say this the having a youtube channel to do it man it helps so much but as always i could not have done this without all of your you know kind words and inspiration as i go along so thank you all for watching i hope you guys have been interested in this video it's been one hell of a ride and as always have a good one <laughs> thank you for watching boys and girls iron within iron without brothers i'll see you next time